This week I saw the new Dune Part 2 movie in IMAX, of course. I am a huge fan of Dune. These are just the Dune books that I have in this apartment. Back home in Florida, I have like a bunch more in storage. I love these books, I know a lot about them, and I have a lot of thoughts on the film. This review is going to be spoiler free until the very end when I talk about spoilers for both the book and the movie. So here is my review of the Dune Part 2 movie as a big fan of the books. Right off the bat, I think that this movie was almost perfect. I said this about Dune Part 1 when it came out and Dune Part 2 held to it, but it is almost like someone ripped the visualizations that I had of the book from my mind and put them on a screen. Just the way it looks and feels and sounds is so in line with what I thought of when I read the book for the first time. When I read it for the first time, I was 16, I was living in Florida, I was on the beach amongst the sand in the dunes, and I just immersed myself completely in the book. The world building is amazing, the imagery is incredible, it's very easy to do. The book had such a massive impact on me and the way that I saw the world and still do see the world. And these movies, the two of them, especially part two, both contributed to that and had me feeling the same ways as I did when I was 16 reading this for the first time. That kind of achievement in cinema is incredible when you can actually match not just the quality of the book, but also the feelings that it elicits. It's very obvious that everyone that worked on this movie did their homework. They read the books, they looked at concept art, they watched other films and series about this. They must have done so much legwork to get ready to tell this story and it fully paid off. Cinematography, amazing. Set design, insane. Costumes, crazy. Sound design, music, everything was so good. The acting, every performance, was jaw-dropping to me. I think that Zendaya probably did the best. She crushed it. She said so much with her body language, with her face. She really didn't even have to say anything. She could have just existed in that film and I would have known exactly what she was feeling, which is insane. Timothy Chalamet was also incredible. I think they could both get best actor, best actress for this performance. Every character who was a side character, supporting character was amazing. Javier Bardem, the best Stilgar I could have asked for. He was so good. It was just the best science fiction film I've seen in years, probably in my whole life. This is my number two movie of all time at this point. It was beat by Howl's Moving Castle, but barely. It's just incredible that they took a book with this kind of scale, with this scope, with this depth of history and development and made it into a film that does it justice. That's crazy. I think when you have source material that's this amazing, you're bound to do an incredible job if you adapt it well. They blew my expectations out of the water in terms of adaptation. There were changes between the book and the film. I think they were amazing. I think they were actually necessary to make it a great film. There is so much that happens in the second half of the first Dune book, and if you're gonna incorporate all of that, you'd need to have like a series a TV series or like a series of movies. It's just too much to do in one film. So they cut out the things that didn't directly contribute to the main progression of the plot and the main characterization. And I think that was a great move. I'll talk more about the exact things they changed later on in the video. I could sit down with you for hours and talk about how every filmmaking aspect of this worked perfectly to tell the story through that medium. But the biggest component of this, the number one highlight for me was the visual aspect. Frank Herbert famously said that the artwork by John Schoener, who did an amazing series of art around Dune, was the best portrayal of his original intention with Dune. He said something to the effect of like, John Schoener was the only other person in his history to have actually traveled to Arrakis because he represented it so perfectly. The filmmakers 100% referenced his work for this movie and I think that made it perfect. Because that way it's true to Frank Herbert's vision, it's true to what other people have expected from the visual aspect of the movie, and it is grand and majestic and terrifying all at once. So I'm really glad that they did their homework. I think that this is absolutely a passion project. You can see the care that went into it. I I'm blown away by almost every aspect of this film. I say almost every aspect because there's one key thing that I think could have been done a lot better that other people have touched on. That is the Middle Eastern and North African representation in the movie. Dune is a science fiction epic set on a different world in a totally different time. It's entirely fictional. However, it is clearly influenced and actually stated to have been influenced by the author by Middle Eastern and North African cultures and Islam. You could say that the music, the language, the costume design all reference these things. I don't know if they directly acknowledged that influence on the story itself as much as they just pulled from it. The biggest criticism that I've seen people make that I agree with is the lack of Middle Eastern and North African actors in the movie. It doesn't detract from the incredible artistry of the movie. It doesn't detract from the art of the filmmaking. And the work of literally every person that worked on this project, they were incredible. I think they did an amazing job. I don't want to talk badly about the work they did, but I do think 
that going further with the acknowledgement of the influence and impact that Middle Eastern North African culture and Islam and all these different influences had on the film, on the book, on the story itself would have been a really important thing to do. And it's a shame that didn't get the recognition that it deserves. The one critical thing I share with everyone entering into the world of Dune for the first time is that Paul is not the hero. They did a wonderful job of showing that in this film. He has a sort of hero's journey. That's the archetype that he sort of goes through throughout this experience. It's a recognizable story archetype that was first popularized by Joseph Campbell. And this film does a beautiful job subverting it. That to me was one of the biggest potential points of failure in this film was to make what's going on look too heroic. To make it look like it lacks the complexity and the various pieces of commentary on our real world that are intrinsic to this element of the book itself. They did that so well and they adapted it beautifully to film. The environmentalism theme, which is critical to Dune, I think was lost a little bit in the movie. It focused more on charismatic leadership, religion, imperialism, colonialism, the white savior complex, like things that are very important to talk about. And I think it was probably a good decision for the film to choose its focus carefully. Overall, my final spoiler-free thoughts on this movie, it was incredible. I don't think I can say it any other way than it was one of the best movies I've ever seen. There is that critical detractor of representation and acknowledgement of influence. That was lacking. It deserves acknowledgement, it deserves discourse, it deserves attention. And that's not an extraneous thing either. That's a critical part of the book, of the original vision of the story. Story. So to not have that with the theatrical release of this film is disappointing. Aside from that critical point, I loved everything else. That's why I'm saying it was almost perfect. That is a key aspect that is definitely sorely missing. Overall, it was an extraordinary film, one of the best I've ever seen. I think you should go see it in IMAX. I also think that you should read about the critical influences and themes that all played a part in the original story. That includes the influences of different cultures and religions upon the story, as well as themes that didn't show up in the movie. You don't necessarily have to read the book to get those things. I think there's great commentary on the book itself, but of course I also do recommend reading the book. It's an amazing book, it's my favorite book, it's so worth it. If you don't want spoilers for the book or the movie, it was a pleasure talking to you, thank you for being here. Definitely go see the film, it's amazing, and definitely go read up on more about the story itself. For those of you who've seen it, don't care about spoilers, or have read the book, let's get into it. There are some significant changes between book and movie. The biggest one I can think of is Paul and Chani's son, Leto II. He's gone. He's, he's out. He's not in the movie at all. That's crazy to me a little bit because he was a significant part of Paul's motivation to just like tackle and topple the empire. I think that the personal motivation was still there because of everything that happened to Paul. Like you don't necessarily need that extra aspect of later the second dying to motivate Paul. But in the book that gives Paul this incredible emotional drive and urgency to do what he's doing. The movie still has that the movie touches on the death of Leto the first. It touches on everything happening to the Fremen, everything that's happened to Paul, the frustration and to an extent hatred he has for the way that his life has been predetermined by other people. All those things are there and all those things motivate him to do what he does. And it feels visceral. But having that extra aspect of Leto the second not there changes the story a little bit. I think that the exclusion is actually critical given the timeline they made for this film. The time between when Paul joins up with the Fremen for the first time and when he becomes Muad'Dib is much shorter. It's a matter of months in the film. And to have a full love story between Paul and Shawnee and conceive a child, have it be born and then have it be killed. Like that's way too much to happen in the time span for the film. Was the shortening of the time span necessary? I think so in order to make it palatable and understandable as a film. If you were going to do a time skip, I don't think it would make sense. It picks up right where the first film left off. That shorter timeline impacts a lot of different things. One of the biggest ones is Chani. I think that her characterization in the movie is actually better than the book in some ways. In the book, I was always like, how is she cool with Paul doing all this? How is she cool with Paul, like, marrying Irulan? Like, what is going on? I don't know. I think it was written by a dude, and that's one of the biggest complaints I have with Frank Herbert. Chani was an amazing character. I absolutely believe that. She's wonderful. But I felt like if I were in her shoes, I would not have handled it the way that she did in the book. So seeing her actually like at the end of the movie, this is the full spoiler section. So at the end of the movie, she rides off in a sandworm. She's like, this sucks, sandworm. It's so good and Zendaya is so good. Like I was thinking that's what I would have done if I was in love with someone who was like the Kwisatz Haderach and they were like, oh uh, yeah, I gotta go like actually marry the daughter of this incredibly evil dude to make everything work, I'd be like, yeah, you can go do that, but like, I'm gonna go ride a sandworm into the desert and not hang out with you because you pissed me off. Like, that feels real, and it's really well acted. And I like that, and I'm excited to see where that's gonna go in the third film. Fufir Hawat, him being gone is sad, but I get it. Like, that's a whole arc 
there's a lot there and, and it does move the story forward, but it's not critical. What else were the biggest changes, man? I don't know. Later the second was probably the biggest. Chani's changes were also huge and the time compression were like the critical ones in my head. I'm sure that other people caught different changes than I did and are thinking of different ones right now. So please label them in the comments with like spoiler alert, um, but let me know what you thought of the changes and which changes you caught from the book to the movie. Of course there are many, like scene to scene, it's not gonna be identical. I do think that by and large, they got a lot of it there. They got the critical aspects there. They got the spirit of it there. I think that these were critical changes to make because the storytelling vehicle is entirely different. You can't give internal dialogue the same way. You can't just focus on imagery and world building. You have to just tell the story as it's happening. That is very difficult to do when you have a story that is as cerebral as Dune is. So by and large, I think they killed it. Regardless, thank you for being here. And as always, happy reading.